Number 1. Ordering at McDonald's. Welcome to McDonald's. May I take your order? I'll have a Big Mac and a small Coke. With everything on it? Yes, please. One Big Mac and one small Coke. Will that be all? Yes. Will that be for here or to go? For here, please. The total comes to $3.87. Here you go. Your order will take just five minutes. No problem. Number two, check in at the airport. Good afternoon. Where are you flying to today? Los Angeles. May I have your passport, please? Here you go. Are you checking any bags? Just this one. Okay. Please place your bag on the scale. I have a stopover in Chicago. Do I need to pick up my luggage there? No. It'll go straight through to Los Angeles. Here are your boarding passes. Your flight leaves from gate 15A, and it'll begin boarding at 320. Your seat number is 26E. Thanks. Number 3. Walt Disney Story. Walt Disney is world famous as the creator of Mickey Mouse. He had two daughters. And often took them to amusement parks, festivals, and zoos. However, one day he found himself sitting on a bench watching his daughters riding on a carousel. Why do I have no fun while my daughters enjoy themselves in the amusement park? he asked himself. Is there any place where parents and children can have fun together? He thought about making a place for both parents and children to enjoy. That was the impetus to make Disneyland. Number 4. The Adventurer Naomi Uemura. Naomi Uemura, February 12, 1941, disappeared February 13, 1984, was a Japanese adventurer who is known particularly for his solo exploits. He succeeded in climbing Mount Everest, the world's tallest mountain, in May 1970, and was the first Japanese man to do so. He was the first person to reach the North Pole solo, the first person to raft the Amazon solo, and the first person to climb Denali solo. On February 12, 1984, he reached the top of Denali again solo. That was his 43rd birthday. He disappeared the next day when he spoke by radio with the Japanese who were flying over Denali. The journal, which was found later, had, I definitely want to reach Denali, written larger than usual, and was followed by many blank pages to write on afterwards. Uemura, who had continued throughout his life to take on new adventures, has not yet descended from Denali. Number 5. The Seto Ohashi Bridge. The Seto Ohashi Bridge, the world's longest two tiered bridge system, is a marvel of modern architecture. It was constructed in 1988, and the major catalyst for building the bridge was the terrible ferry accident in which 168 people were killed. At that time, the ship was carrying children on a school trip. In total, more than 300 children from four primary and junior high schools were involved in the accident, and 100 children were killed. At the time, the only connection between Shikoku and Honshu was by regular ferry. However, what should have been a fun school trip turned into a tragic accident. Afterwards, there was growing demand for a bridge. And finally, the long cherished wish of 4 million people in Shikoku was achieved. Now you can reach Shikoku safely by train or car, and upon reaching the top, admire the spectacular panoramic views of the Seto Inland Sea and its islands. Number 6. Rubik's Cube. In 1975, the Hungarian academic Erno Rubik applied for a patent on his invention. 
Little did he know that his teaching tool would become an iconic global phenomenon. He was working as a professor of architecture at the Budapest College of Applied Arts. Believing that the best way to teach his students was to show them, he wanted to create something they could play with to get them thinking creatively about geometric forms and spatial relationships. He aimed to make something tactile and mobile that was simple enough for his students to understand, but contained some kind of problem to be solved. And, more importantly, it would challenge them to persevere when faced with a complex, frustrating puzzle. First of all, you must be patient. It's very useful when solving a problem. Then you need some spatial memory, three dimensional memory, he said on a talk show. To memorize which congregation you are and where the pieces are, and so on. If we close our eyes, we know. We remember, and not only a picture, but the meaning of the picture. It is estimated that by 1982, more than 100 million Rubik's Cubes had been sold. Nowadays, people worldwide are challenging themselves and enjoying playing with them. Number seven, the Japanese pioneer in MLB. 1995, second of May. That day marked a memorable day for Hideo Nomo, who had moved from Kintetsu to the Los Angeles Dodgers when he pitched five innings in the major leagues, allowing one hit, striking out seven, and allowing no runs. The fans in the stadium in the USA cheered as Nomo pitched wonderfully, with the mysterious tornado pitching form from Japan. He was a pitcher with a bright future in the Japanese league, where he was active from his first year as a professional and won the Rookie of the Year award. In his fifth year as a professional, he had a contract dispute and decided to leave the Japanese league, where he had achieved brilliant results, to try his luck in the majors. At the time, his salary was the lowest guaranteed in the majors at $100,000. A substantial reduction compared to his time in the Japanese league. He won't make it. Most of the Japanese media criticized his challenge with a harsh eye, as he was the first Japanese to try out for the major leagues. However, Nomo, who started in the minors, became a member of the major leagues on merit, and in his first year with the Dodgers, That year, he achieved an impressive 13 6 record, a 2.54 goals against average, and 236 strikeouts. Later, he also won the Rookie of the Year title and even experienced the dream of starting for the All Stars. His success in the major leagues was a major milestone for Japanese baseball players. More and more Japanese went on to try out for the majors, and Ichiro and Matsuzaka also made their mark there. It all started with Nomo's first step, when he was told that he would never make it. Number 8. Poor Elephants. What are the most popular animals in your opinion? Lions? Or giraffes? Pandas? Of course, elephants are a must for one of the most popular animals in the zoo. They, with their long noses, big ears, and innocent eyes, are very popular among children and are a must for any zoo. However, they had sad experiences during the war. Have you ever seen the monument for the animals in the Ueno Zoo? That is for animals that were killed by poison or anything else as a way of protecting people during the war. The bombing was getting worse and worse at that time. If animals ran away from their cages when Tokyo was bombed, people might have been killed by them. It could have been very dangerous. There were three elephants in the Ueno Zoo at that time, named John, Wanri, and Tonki. John was too aggressive, but very smart, and the others were calm and friendly. Firstly, dangerous animals like leopards and lions were killed. 
Then it was time they had to kill the elephants. They fed poisoned potatoes to John, but he was smart and didn't eat them. Then they fed nothing to John, and he died 17 days later. Wanri and Tonki had nothing to eat, and they were losing weight. Zookeepers had been caring for the elephants like their own children, so it was very painful. One day, the two elephants suddenly stood up on their feet and started performing. They might have thought they would get food for performing as they had before. When the zookeepers watched their performance, they started crying and gave them food and water. But finally, the two elephants died. There are still wars going on somewhere in the world. Even though we know that war is not necessary, why do people keep making the same mistakes? Number 9. Pandas have come. The first time giant pandas came to Ueno Zoo was 50 years ago, on October 28, 1972. Prime Minister Kakue Tanaka succeeded in normalizing diplomatic relations between Japan and China. As proof of this friendship, the male Kan Kan and the female Nan Nan came to Japan from China. Since it was the first time anyone had seen a panda, people were extremely excited, and there were long lines there every day to see the rare animal. That year, a panda boom really started. When pandas first arrived in Japan, we did not have enough time to prepare for them, so we welcomed them into the newly built tiger enclosure from the previous year. At the zoo, only one of the approximately 50 zookeepers had ever actually seen a panda. And there were only three documents about pandas at the zoo, two of which were in English. Caring for pandas was like groping around in the dark. Keepers took turns caring for Kan Kan and Nan Nan to check their health 24-7. The effort paid off. And in 1979, Nan Nan became pregnant through natural mating. Expectations for her birth increased. But unfortunately, she died during her pregnancy. Then, as if to follow suit, the following year, in 1980, a tragedy occurred in which Kan Kan also died. Later, the Chinese government gave two pandas to Japan again. In 1986, Tonton, female, was born. Tonton grew up safely, and we would once again cause a panda boom in the country. Pandas, with their charming black and white coloring, are popular all over the world. The panda, which is currently one of the endangered species, is also the logo character of WWF. Number 10. What gluten-free means. The term gluten-free is still unfamiliar in Japan, but in Europe, it has already become a common word. Gluten is an ingredient in wheat and rye flour that acts as a binding agent and gives bread its unique chewy texture. The texture of gluten and pastry addiction may have led many people to eat bread on a regular basis. Gluten, however, can actually cause allergies in some people. Even if they are not allergic to it, it is now known to cause symptoms such as diarrhea, abdominal pain, itchy skin, and difficulty concentrating. Symptoms such as feeling somewhat unwell, which are often referred to as unidentified complaints, may be caused by eating too much bread and other wheat products. The term has become widely known as gluten-free, and many people have improved their physical and mental health by removing wheat products from their diets. For example, tennis player Djokovic is known to have improved his performance since switching to a gluten-free diet. Despite being an exceptionally talented player, he was unable to achieve satisfactory results. One day, he was diagnosed with a gluten and casein sensitivity and started a gluten-free diet. 
he immediately noticed an increase in the quality of his sleep, had more energy, and felt lighter. When he then tried bagels again, he immediately felt a sense of malaise and realized he needed to go on a gluten free diet. We all know what he has achieved since then. Foods you think you like to eat may actually be addictive foods. If you are feeling somewhat unwell, you need to stop eating your favorite pastry. This is because there is very little nutrition in that pastry and it is not good for your health. Number 11 SNS Addiction Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. Social media is already very common and essential for both children and adults. They use many kinds of it every day, and sometimes they spend too much time on social media, which is like an addiction. They upload photos on Instagram, post the comments on TikTok, and chat on WhatsApp all of the time. Do you think it has a good effect on children? First of all, children are learning everything, everywhere, every day when they are not online. They should play with real people, inside or outside, and then they can get the social skills they need for the future. What if they spent too much time on social media instead of playing with friends? When they become adults, they might not have enough social skills. They might become impatient. Unable to forgive others and only think of themselves. Online and offline are really different. Because you cannot physically feel the feelings of the person on the other side of the screen, physically feeling things tells us a lot more information than you think. On the other hand, it is also a fact that social media can be very useful and helpful for everyone. When the pandemic hit the world, All you could do was stay at home. You might have felt anxious and alone, and it may have been painful to think about what the future held. Your daily life had completely changed. At that time, social media helped you. You could see and talk to friends. Social media played a role as an important tool in socializing. That is why it might not be that social media is bad. But that the problem lies with those of us and how to use it. There is a famous proverb in Japan children watch the back of their parents. That means children copy their parents' actions, not their words. Therefore, you have to think about how to face social media, not children. Number 12 The Three Major Cuisines of the World. The three major cuisines of the world are French, Chinese, and Turkish. Have you ever wondered why Italian and Japanese, which are popular all over the world, are not included? First of all, the world's three major cuisines are not the world's most popular cuisines. So, what criteria were used to select the world's three major cuisines? There are various theories. But it is said that these were court dishes. They were dishes that kings and emperors ate at court. Therefore, Chinese, French, and Turkish are all dishes that were eaten at the imperial court in ancient times. Historically, the three countries were in centers and routes for trade, and it was also a place where it was easy for various materials. Spices and cooking methods to be transmitted from each country. Both the people who cooked at the imperial court and the chefs pursued better dishes and more delicious ingredients, and each country's cuisine developed. They eventually spread to other countries and had influence on the cuisines of these countries. People are especially familiar with things like kebabs in Turkey. But Turkey was part of a huge state called the Ottoman Empire. There, chefs from various regions of the empire gathered to study a wide variety of ingredients. Turkish cuisine developed greatly through competition to explore new tastes, exotic flavors, and textures. Turkey is the birthplace of yogurt, which is essential to our daily life. 
It is the place where Asia and Europe meet. A variety of dishes were probably created from the harmony of the rich ingredients and spices that came from China along the Silk Road, and the seafood, olives, and nuts of the Mediterranean Sea. The history like that is a characteristic of the world's three major cuisines. Why not try one of the world's three major cuisines, not only to enjoy the taste, but also to feel the history?